Once the client has answered all your questions, you have enough information on hand to determine whether the project is of interest to you or not. But before you can start working on it, you still have to get back to the client with your project proposal and your quote. These documents lay the groundwork for the rest of the project. We're going to spend some time carefully looking at what these documents are. But before we can do that, we need an important piece of information, the price that we're going to charge. Of the two documents, the quote will list out the price we charge, broken down by the components of the project. So before we put the document together, let's talk about how we can arrive at a price. As someone new to the game, pricing can be very frustrating. Let's say that in our hypothetical situation, our first client is a friend who wants a website for her mom's business. Should we even charge to begin with, given that it's a friend? Our client's budget, given that it's not a pressing project, is also quite low. Also, since this is our first time working on an actual project, we have no guarantee of the quality or timeliness of our work, and therefore probably shouldn't charge, right? Now, those are all legitimate concerns, but you should really consider whether working for free is advantageous or not. The fact that you consider yourself inexperienced shouldn't drive you to work for free. There may be times when just starting out, you might have to work for free but don't assume that free is your only option. If your client is willing to pay you, charge for your work, because there are certainly negatives to working for free. Now, it's true that working for free can help you build up a portfolio, but nine times out of 10, you will be supporting the product you just created for them, whether it's a website, web app, or mobile app. Because you did the work for free the first time, a client might expect that any work you do for them in the future will be free as well you'll be expected to update the website or add new functionality whenever the client wants and at no cost to them. If and when they spread the word of your services, they might let other potential clients know that the work was done for free. Now you have more clients who either expect free work or at least a great product for dirt cheap. Working for free can also damage your relationship with a client. There might be a chance that you want to stop working on this project after the initial job but the client wants as much work out of you as possible since they're not paying for it. If you decide to stop working on it, there goes the relationship. This can be quite detrimental if the client was a friend or family. Free projects are also usually lower in priority than anything else that has the potential of bringing in money and so aren't worked on as much. The inability to deliver something on time simply because free work isn't as high a priority is another way you can get on bad terms with the client. In short, Free work might seem like a great short-term answer to get that first client on board, but it can lead to long-term headaches. Since the cons definitely outweigh the pros, if you can afford to, look for a client that can pay, or at least reconsider doing free work for your existing clients. If you're convinced that you should charge for your work, well, that brings up a second, more complicated question. How and what should you charge? The answer, as you will find everywhere on the web, is it depends. There are different methods to establishing a price, certainly, but it also depends on your location, situation, experience, and goals. The two most prominent methods you hear about is to either charge on an hourly basis or to charge a flat fee on a per-project basis. Different people in the industry have different opinions on the matter, and there isn't one right way. It's up to you to figure out what you're most comfortable with. But let's start by going over some of the distinctions between the two. If you want to charge by the hour, you take an hourly rate and multiply that by the amount of time you think it will take to complete the project. This has its benefits, of course. If a project isn't completed in the time frame initially established, it's easier for you to revise an estimate of the final costs. You can also do this if the client suddenly changes the project or requests an extra round of revisions or features. But hourly pricing isn't for everyone. You have to know two important pieces of information, the hourly rate you're going to charge and the amount of time it will take to finish a project. Coming up with an hourly rate as a new freelancer can be a little tricky. And given that it's your first time working on a project, your time estimations could be off. Even if you have that information ready, you could scare clients off with hourly pricing. Having a rate of $50 per hour is not uncommon as a web freelancer, but it might seem excessive to clients who think of work in terms of 40-hour work weeks. If you tell a client you charge $50 per hour, 
and then it will take around two weeks to complete a project, they're going to assume that you will charge them for nine to five workdays for two weeks for a total of $4,000. In reality, you won't be billing them for every single working hour of the two week span, but they might not get that. Another disadvantage is that when you price hourly, you have to run everything by the client to make sure that they're okay with paying for that. This can get complicated. On the other hand, you have pricing per project. Per project prices are easier for the client to understand. You just give them a set rate for the whole project that eliminates any sort of confusion. Like hourly rates, pricing effectively on a per project basis requires a bit of experience on your part. You should have an idea of how long it takes you to complete a type of project and what that should translate to in terms of costs. It's easy to underestimate time on a project. And when this happens with hourly pricing, you can revise your final price. But with a per project basis, it's harder to determine what that extra time spent means in terms of costs and how you can best relay that to the client. Now, there are situations where certain pricing models may be better suited over the other. It makes sense to charge per hour if you don't know how long it will take for you to complete a certain project, if it seems like the project may change once you start working on it, or that there may be lots of additions along the way, and if the project isn't something you've done before. On the other hand, go with per project pricing if you've done a project like this often enough to know how long it takes, the project is relatively short and specific, and finally, your client's budget isn't very flexible, meaning you can't revise hours or charge for extra work.